there we go. Race one is underway as the machines roar and scream through the starting chute. Oh, Wilmax are out! Class 1 World Powerboat Championship returns to Abu Dhabi for the final round of the 2015 season where the world title in both Class 1 and V1 will be decided. This state-of-the-art city of skyscrapers that stands ever on the forefront of technology also has an abundance of natural gems and treasures. Abu Dhabi is a one with nature with a lot of green spaces and luxuriant parks as well as some of the best golf courses in the world. It's also home to rare and beautiful wildlife, including hundreds of species of birds and the wild deer from which Abu Dhabi gets its name. As modern as Abu Dhabi is, it's also true to its history, traditions and roots, with age-old customs and crafts still practiced today, maintaining a direct connection with an illustrious Arabian past that is as deeply intertwined with the sea as it is with the desert. This is a sun-soaked Middle Eastern destination that offers a whole range of fun and activities for visitors of all types from all over the world, with blue waters and sandy beaches to satisfy all tastes. It's no wonder Abu Dhabi remains one of the top destinations for powerboat racing in the world. It promises to be an action-filled weekend for powerboat fans as they cheer on their home team in a 10-boat field. There's a total of 10 boats competing in the Grand Prix of Abu Dhabi, six Class 1 catamarans and four V-hulls. The favorites are hometown heroes Team Abu Dhabi 6 with former world champion John Tomlinson on throttle alongside Gary Ballo on the wheel. In the previous round in Salerno, Italy, the American duo won both races, earning them 40 points and they lead the championship going into the final round. Yes, we are number one uh, so far leading the points, so our goal is today we've got to finish this race, we've got to get good points, do the best we can do, and, uh, and really uh, try and win this championship. That's the main goal here. They're joined by Team Abu Dhabi 5 with Majid Al-Mansouri and Rashid Al-Tayer, who had a runner-up and fourth place finish in Italy that put them equal second in the world standings. Tied for second is Italian outfit T-Bone Station, with owner Luca Formili Fendi driving alongside veteran throttle man Giovanni Carpitella. The big surprise is that eight time defending world champions victory team are on the back foot going into the final round. Two of the most successful class one racers in the world, Arif Al Zafin and Nader Ben Hendi, managed runner up in race two in Salerno, but a race one fifth place finish leaves them 18 points behind Team Abu Dhabi six and fourth in the world standings. A second victory team brings together Australian Darren Nicholson and Italian veteran Matteo Nicolini in victory seven. I'm kind of surprised, eh? Be with victory, but uh, I really enjoy both is good. Uh, we have fun with uh, Darren first time for him, and I get for me it's a second time in this boat. Just we do a quick test uh, in Dubai uh, last week. And uh, I think we are okay. We can, uh, we can improve uh, this afternoon and uh, we will be ready for the race to compete. The Class 1 lineup is completed by number 91, Energima Zabo Relecta, featuring Christian Zaborowski and Nicholas Johansson. In the V1, there are four boats competing. Aaron Kiantar and Dominique Martini of Chaudron 
won race one in Salerno, edging Carl Pugh, before Carl Pugh struck back in race two as Antonio Schiano and Giuseppe Schiano di Cola beat Chaudron. The two teams go into the final round in Abu Dhabi, neck and neck equal on 35 points in second place in the World V1 standings. Yeah, we come here to, to defend the championship, uh, so we have the chance, we have a good boat, so we try it, that's our uh, aim. <laughs> It's number four Bernico New Stars Nico Bertels and Dimitri Vandeshev who go into Abu Dhabi leading the championship on 41 points, the only boat to finish the first race of the season from Venezia to Salerno. Um, at the moment we uh, we line first in the championships, but you know there's there's two more races to go. We got some very strong competitors like Shadow on his right and on stale. You got Scano, you got you know Silverline. You know they they're all very competitive and everybody's gonna try and put out their best for, for today's race. So. All will be up against English team number 47 Silver Line as Andrew Langdon and Ian Blacker make their first appearance of the year. The Grand Prix of Abu Dhabi once again features a very tricky and technical inshore offshore circuit where teams have to negotiate flat sticky inside conditions and rough tumbling offshore waters that will make for an especially challenging start for both C1 and V1 boats, who are this year running on the same course. But before any racing can begin, drivers underwent a series of dunk tests with Bergamo Scuba Angels, in which the Hans head and neck support method was introduced and tested by four C1 V1 competitors, who were required to exit their capsized boat while wearing the device. Testing today is the hands device, the head and neck support system that uh, we are looking to bring into offshore racing next season. Um, so we're doing some trials now just to make sure that everything is okay uh, before we bring it into the rule book. The hands device is uh, and basically in a frontal impact. It stops the head pulling too far forward and causing uh, uh, spine damage. In the qualifying to determine which team will start in pole position, Victory 3, who finished the disappointing fifth place in the last round, made no mistakes this time as they set the pace with a blistering 4 minutes 46.93 second lap. It proved a daunting time for the other teams, but things started shaking up toward the end of the 60 minute session as Tomlinson and Bullo in Abu Dhabi 6 came tantalizingly close just five tenths of a second off the pace. Victory's feathers were ruffled. Then T-Bone Station went out and set a time of four minutes, 46.54 seconds, as Fendi and Carpatella set their sights on pole position. Arif al and Nader bin Hendi felt the pole in danger, going out again to try and ward off the competition. It was a clinical performance from the Dubai-based duo, going almost three seconds faster than their initial time to set an insurmountable time of four minutes, 43.93. That clinched pole position for victory three. T-Bone Station changed their setup for one last run and pushed like mad. They were unable to beat victory three, but a second place was all they needed to win the pole position championship for 2015. Well. It's a good news, it's a good start for the weekend. Let's see if we can uh, continue this way. Abu Dhabi 6 kept third place, while Nicholson and Nicolini took fourth place in Victory 7, outpacing both Energy Mazabo Racing and Team Abu Dhabi 5. Today I am sure I am happy because I am using our original boat, the new boat, number three, because uh, you know the first race in Salerno, I am using the old boat, uh, I can't feel I can do something, uh, but anyway, I am here in Abu Dhabi, I show everyone uh, the Middle East boat, Victory Team is still the king. In the V-Hulls, Carol Pugh was able to shut out Silverline early, setting the qualifying pace but they would be surpassed by Chiantar and Martini in Chaudron, who had a brilliant run to take provisional pole. The big news, however, was Bernico Newstar, as Nico Bertels and Dimitri Vandeshev needed just the single lap to set a time of 5 minutes 24.77, 
and take the V1 pole position. Chaudron starts second ahead of Carol Pugh, Silverline in fourth. But it's Carol Pugh who clinched the pole position championship for 2015 with Chaudron runners up and Bernico Newstar third. And Fendi get to enjoy their place at the top of the podium with their pole position championship win. Minutes were ticking down to the penultimate race of the season. The excitement building, tensions mounting. Race one of the Grand Prix of Abu Dhabi was on. 20 drivers in 10 boats hitting the waters looking for a win. The drivers waiting for the green flag. The race is on. Altair and Al-Mansouri off to a flying start on the outside. But taking the lead on the starting straight is T-Bone Station zooming away. Victory 3 and Pole are trying to keep up with the Italians and they almost catch up with them. In the V-Hulls, number 81 Carol Pugh shoots ahead as Chaudron tries to catch up with the yellow boat. In the class one, Team Abu Dhabi 5 is catching up with Energy Mazabo Racing as they approach the first boy. Altair and Al-Mansouri giving it their all. But Victory 7 is also in the mix as Nicolini and Nicholson catch up with the Norwegian boat and they collide. In the lead, T-Bone Station fly ahead of the field. Victory 3 hot on their tail with Team Abu Dhabi 6 following those two boats in third. Abu Dhabi 6 takes out a boy. That could get Tomlinson and Ballo penalized. Further back, Victory 7 passes Energy Mazabo Racing to move into fourth spot. T-Bone Station is 16 points behind Abu Dhabi 6 in the world standings, so they know they need to win here to keep their hopes alive. Abu Dhabi 6, on the other hand, know they just need two runner-up finishes to seal their first ever world title. In the V1, Carol Pugh's Antonio Schiano and Giuseppe Schiano lead the race in lap one. At the back of the class one field, Altair and Al-Mansouri and Abu Dhabi 5 are locking horns with Energima Zabo Racing. The Abu Dhabi outfit overhauls Zaborowski and Johansson to move into fifth position as the crowd cheers them on. At the end of the first lap, T-Bone Station in command of the race with Victory 3 behind them in second, followed by Team Abu Dhabi 6 then Victory 7, Abu Dhabi 5, and Energy Mazaba Racing bringing up the rear. In the V-Hulls, Carol Pugh continues its formidable start to the race by opening its lead. But there's a big battle for second behind them between Chaudron and Bernico Newstar. Chaudron just edging ahead. Langdon and Blacker and Silverline are trying to push on the top three V-Hulls in their first race of the year. In the lead in Class 1, can Fendi and Carpatella hold on and defeat Victory? The Italians are racing with real determination out there. The second Victory boat, Victory 7, sees the return of former European champion Matteo Nicolini. In the V1, Chaudron has caught up with Carol Pugh. Can the Maltese-French duo overhaul the Italians? Carol Pugh holds on, but Chaudron remains in pursuit. Chaudron's determination pays off, and the Italian team take the lead, bumping the yellow boat down to second as defending world champions Counter and Martini take command of the race. Carol Pugh's woes continue as Bernico Newstar also overtakes the Italians. But Bertels and Bandeshev have a problem, and Bernico Newstar drops back to last place as Silverline move up into third. Trouble also for Chaudron as Chiantar and Martini drop back and Carol Pugh moves back up into the lead. Chaudron are out of the race with fumes coming out of their engine. It's smooth sailing now for the father and son team of Antonio and Giuseppe Schiano. Victory three pushing hard on T-Bone Station in the rough conditions at the top of the circuit, but the Italians hold off the blue boat. 
Alzafin and Benhendi are desperate to close the gap, and they go flying off the T-bone tail as they continue their dogged pursuit. Tomlinson and Ballo in third place. It's just enough as the Americans look for Abu Dhabi's first world title. Their teammates Altair and Al-Mansuri in fifth, warding off Energima Zabarelekta behind them. Positions remained unchanged as the white flag goes up for the last lap. Fendi and Carpatella are heading down that final straight with a win in their sights. There they have it, beating victory three for the win, and they keep their hopes for a first world title alive, moving just eight points behind Team Abu Dhabi six. Carol Pugh, comfortable winners in the B1 as the father and son team cross the line ahead of Silver Line. Celebration time for the Italians as they beat their nemesis victory for the race one win. Victory three runners up, Abu Dhabi six third, then victory seven fourth, followed by Abu Dhabi five and energy. It was amazing, it was amazing because, you know, when you beat a boat like uh, victory team number three is, uh, is a piece of history. And then the Abu Dhabi number five. So you understand, the, boat, the best teams in the world behind our us. But it's okay. Not good, not what we expected. We had issues a bit, but that's racing. We try to resolve it for tomorrow. Let's see what we can do. In the V-Hulls, a win for Antonio and Giuseppe Schiano. Silverline finishing runner-up, Chaudron and Bernico Newstar both having technical problems. Mi sento indescribilmente. I cannot tell you how happy I am. My sons and I trained all winter for this. We felt we could do it here, and we did it. Un inverno intero. Ce lo sentivamo. È arrivato. Abu Dhabi 6 now just needs a third place finish in race 2 to win its first ever world championship. With the day's racing over, drivers and teams relaxed and feasted on another famous Abu Dhabi gala dinner as they enjoyed the music, took in the show and soaked in the atmosphere to put a stressful day's racing behind them. Class one, have fun. In qualifying for race two, Victory Three clinched pole ahead of Abu Dhabi Six with T Bone Station starting fourth. In the V1s, Bernico Newstar had pole. Uh, definitely, butterflies are there. A lot of butterflies, especially on the start. Uh, we'll push for the maximum and hope to be first on the first buoy. Will be faster race. You see, it's very difficult to overtake here. So get a good position in the start is so important for the race, for the final result. Silverline starts second behind Bernico Newstar. Yeah, we're much better today. We got um, the engines dialed in better this morning. We got a better balance in pole, and we've we closed up a big gap, nearly 40 seconds from where we were yesterday. The final race of the year. The Abu Dhabi crowds taking their seats and holding their breath. A world championship title has never been this close. Could their team win the biggest trophy in power boating? The green flag goes up and the final race of the season is underway. Victory three know they need a minor miracle if they're to defend their world title, pushing to the max on the start straight. But Abu Dhabi 6's MTI boat pulls up neck and neck with the blue boat. Abu Dhabi 5 flies off at the head of the pack. Energima struggles at the back. Tomlinson gives it everything he's got on throttle as the American duo pull away from that victory sandwich. Victory 7 has moved up beside them, Nicolini and Nicholson making an attack on the two lead Abu Dhabi boats. Starting back and forth, race one winners T-Bone Station struggle through the second start gate, trying to keep up with the leaders. The class one fleet enters the inside part of the course, Abu Dhabi 6 holding off the Victory 7 onslaught as Victory 3 on the other side also try to catch the Americans. Victory 3 needs to win this race and hope that Abu Dhabi 6 are unable to finish if they're to defend their world title. 
In the V-Hulls, Carol Pugh, who started in third, give chase to Bernico Newstar, briefly taking the lead before Nico Bertels and Dmitry Bandeshev break away again. On the smooth inshore circuit, Tomlinson and Bello lead the race, on track for Abu Dhabi's first ever world title. Victory 3 is in second position behind them. Victory 7 dropping back in third. Abu Dhabi 5 is fourth. Fendi and Carpatella are wallowing in fifth, which throws in doubt their world title hopes here, knowing they have eight points to close with Abu Dhabi 6. Bringing up the rear is Energima Zabo Relecta. Further back, Bernico Newstar have some great pace out there as they open their lead over Carol Pugh, Silverline in third behind them. Back in the lead, the fight continues between Abu Dhabi 6 and Victory 3. Tomlinson and Ballo still holding off Al Zafin and Bin Hendy. Bernico Newstar continues to go full tilt, flying in the lead of the V-Hulls. Going into lap three, Tomlinson and Bello maintain their lead over Victory 3 with Victory 7 in third. As they head out to the offshore part of the course, Victory catches up with Abu Dhabi 6. It looks like they're having technical problems. Abu Dhabi 6 slows down and they relinquish their lead to Victory 3. The Americans regain their speed and get back in the race, but now they're the ones trailing Victory. The defending world champions in command of race two now, but even a runner-up finish will secure the world championship for Abu Dhabi 6. Victory 7 took advantage of that Abu Dhabi scare to close the gap, but were unable to move past them into second position. Bertels and Vandeshev are still very much in command of the V1, but they also have a problem. Bertels tells his driver to pull off the course. And as with race one, Carol Pugh's consistency pays off as they again take the lead over another boat's misfortune. Silverline moves up to second spot after Bernico Newstar drops out. In lap five, T-Bone Station tries to take Abu Dhabi 5 in a desperate bid to move up the field, but they take out a boy and their championship hopes are fading fast. Nevertheless, Fendi and Carpatella still manage to overhaul Altair and Al Mansouri as the Italians move into fourth spot, but they know it may be too little too late. As the race enters the final lap, Victory 3 on course for a race win, but Abu Dhabi 6 on course for the world title. Al Zafin and Bin Hendi look like they know that the world title may have been lost. Victory 7 maintains its third place as they pop two boys in their last lap. Victory 3 are race 2 winners, closing out the year with a win. But they cede the world title to Abu Dhabi 6, the new world champions. Great racing from the American duo. Victory 7 finished third ahead of T-Bone Station, Abu Dhabi 5 and Energima Zabo Relecta. It's good race because I will try the push from the start and then I saw number six coming, then uh, stay in uh, front of us uh, two lap. Then other try to push outside at the limit, at the pass him, then we'll continue with uh, the first position. In the V1, Carol Pugh completes the perfect Grand Prix with a two race win for Antonio Schiano and Federico Montanari. Silver line runner up, Bernico Newstar unable to finish the race. World V1 champions for 2015, Carol Pugh won 75 points. Bernico Newstar, world runners up, Chaudron third. Yeah, we are very happy for this world championship because I'm a winner in, uh, in, in this category. Today is uh, very hard because uh, Bernico today is uh, fast, but our affidability of engine has a uh, premium in the uh, first position. <laughs> yes, we are very happy. Victory celebrate their race to win. The UIM Class 1 champions for 2015, John Tomlinson and Gary Ballo of Team Abu Dhabi. Yeah, man, it feels great. Uh, just happy for Team Abu Dhabi, happy for everybody involved to make this happen, and just uh, feel blessed to be part of it, and uh, glad it all came together for them. 
This is the biggest championship of my life. Um, the words don't describe it. I'm just happy for the team. I'm happy for everybody that's involved with the Abu Dhabi race team. And uh, I'd like to thank everyone. As uh, H2 Racing, we have uh, so finished a five years program of promoting Class 1 with, uh, for the UIM. We wish the best of luck to all the team, to the new promoter that UIM will appoint. We will concentrate and continue our work in Formula 1, Aqua Bike uh, and Nations Cup. And of course, uh, we remain always uh, available to the UIM to support the sport in any form and wherever it is request our knowledge. Thank you and good luck, class one. That brings to a close another UIM C1V1 World Powerboat Championship. See you in 2016. And there we go, race one is underway as the machines roar and scream through the starting chute. Oh, well, Max, you